Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you MIDI or the MIDI basics in Reaper. Now, before we get started, we should set up our MIDI in the preferences. So let's go up here to the options menu. And to save time in the future, instead of choosing preferences from down here, let's use the keyboard shortcut which on PC is control comma, and on Mac, it's command comma. Hit that keyboard shortcut to open up our preferences. And as I showed you with the audio on the device, we could set up the audio device right here to our computer audio interface where our speakers are plugged into. We wanna do the same thing for our MIDI devices right over here. If you have a USB MIDI keyboard, it should show up over here. And then we select it and double click it. Here's the name of that keyboard. And then we should enable it from here. And if we're using continuous controller information, like with sliders or knobs, we should turn on this as well. Now I'm also going to rename my keyboard under alias name as USB MIDI keyboard. Hit OK. And now it shows up here. And now if we create a new track, we can put it into record. And instead of using our audio inputs right here as mono or stereo, we could choose MIDI. And here's our USB MIDI keyboard. And we'll set it up to be all channels. I should also mention, if you don't have a USB MIDI keyboard, you could use the virtual MIDI keyboard right here. Then we go to view and go down here to virtual MIDI keyboard. And we can use our computer keyboard to trigger MIDI using the keys right down here. Z, X, C, and so on. But we're gonna use a USB MIDI keyboard in this video. And just to show you what I'm playing, we're going to add it to our screen right down here. But just know this keyboard isn't a part of Reaper. It's just going to show you what notes I'm playing. So now I'll set this back up to our USB MIDI keyboard. Now, if we play the keyboard, we should see level over here on the meters. And we do. So now to create sound, we need to add a plugin to this track. A virtual instrument plugin. So go to the effects, hit the button, and then we'll choose instruments right here. Now Reaper comes with a few instruments. Let's start off with this one right here, Rea Synth. Let's double click it, and that adds it to this track. So now if we play a MIDI keyboard, we hear that synth. But it's a pretty basic synth. So in this video, we're going to use a different virtual instrument. So let's delete this one and instead double click over here. And we're going to choose Resamplematic 5000, which is a sample playback plugin that comes with Reaper. Let's double click it. Now Reaper doesn't come with any samples. So I added a few to the Reaper stash. So let's go to the internet. And let's search Reaper Stash. Then we'll go to this website and we'll search Kenny MIDI. And here's a file I uploaded with some sounds we can use. So let's download it right from here. And it should look like this with four sounds we could choose from a pluck synth, a kick, a snare, and a hi hat. So let's go back to Reaper. So now we could drag those sounds into this plugin. Let's go back to those sounds on a hard drive. Let's drag in the pluck synth and drop it. Now, if we play our keyboard, we hear the sound. But as you'll notice, if we go up and down the keyboard, it doesn't change the pitch. 
So we need to change the mode. Right over here, change this to semitones shifted. And now it's going to play different notes when we hit different keys. Let's name our track Synth. Let's give it a color. And just like we did with the preferences, let's assign a keyboard shortcut to adding colors to our tracks to make it quicker. So we'll go up here to the Actions menu, Show Action List, and let's search Custom Track Color. And right down over here, there's an action to change the color with a keyboard shortcut. We'll add one. I'm going to use C. And now if we hit the C key after selecting our tracks, we could add colors that easily. I'm going to choose a color like this. Now we have a synth track. But before we record this part, I want to add another effect to make the track more interesting. So under Effects, right after our Virtual Instrument plugin, let's add a delay. Double click right here, choose the Reaper plugins, and go up here to Read Delay which is a delay plugin that comes with Reaper. We'll bring the wet sound or the effect sound down a bit, change the delay time to two eighth notes, which is a quarter note, and bring the feedback up a bit as well, which is adding repeats to the delay. So now it sounds like this. The delay just adds some rhythm. Let's make it more interesting by creating two delays that pan. So pan this one to the left, add a new tap, and pan that one to the right, and bring the length up about 15 milliseconds more, creating a slight delay from the left and right speakers, like this. Let's turn on the click track right here, let's record our part. And just like that, we have our first MIDI part. And to edit it, because it's a bit sloppy, we can just double click it to open up the MIDI editor, which looks like this. Here's the notes that we played. Here's the MIDI keyboard showing us what pitches we played. And down over here, we could see our velocity or how hard we hit the keys. In this editor, we can move our notes around just by dragging them. We can make them longer or shorter. We can create new ones just by drawing or delete them by double-clicking them. Let's quantize this performance so it's perfectly in time. We'll go up here to the Q button, and that opens up this dialog, where it's going to quantize based on our grid. Our grid is set to eighth notes. Let's change it to sixteenths. All notes instead of selected notes, and just the position. We're not going to quantize the ending or the length. So let's hear that quantized. It sounds much better. So now we can close the MIDI editor and let's trim the front to be exactly at bar two and the end to be exactly at bar six. And let's loop this part by selecting from bar two to bar six and turning on looping over here. So now let's add some drums to our part. Let's double click over here to create a new track. 
We'll name it Drums. Take this track out of Record and put this track into Record. Set it up as MIDI, USB, MIDI keyboard. Give it a color. Let's add a plugin to this track. Hit the Effects button, go to Instruments, and choose Resamplematic 5000. Let's drag in the other samples. We'll start with the kick. And if we play a MIDI keyboard, we hear the kick sample. Now to add multiple drums to this track, we'll choose one key to trigger this sound. Because right now, it's going to be triggered by any of them. But we could choose just one for this. So let's hit C2 on our keyboard. Then we'll double click right over here. And it chooses what note it's going to be triggered by. So now if we hit C2, we hear the kick. But if we hit any other key, we won't. So now we can assign those keys to other drum sounds. So let's copy this effects instance and paste it. Let's add in the snare to this one. Drag it and drop it on this one. Hit D2 on the USB keyboard. Double click over here. Now it's assigned to D2. So if we hit D2, we should hear the snare. Let's do the same thing for the hi-hat. Select it, copy, and paste to duplicate it. Let's drag in the hi-hat and drop it. Hit F sharp 2 on a MIDI keyboard. Double click over here to assign it. And now we have three drum sounds on this track. So let's record a drum part. Now for drums, I want to do this a bit differently because I like to record on multiple passes. So instead of recording the normal way, we're going to change the mode over here. Normally, we'd record the input, whether it be audio or MIDI. But with MIDI, we have a few other options over here. We'll choose Record MIDI Overdub. So now we can record multiple parts on top of each other without erasing the previous part. Makes it a lot easier for programming drums, especially in loop mode. And I also want to quantize on the way in to save us some time. So we're going to right click over here and choose Track Record Settings Input Quantize. That opens up this dialog where we can quantize on the way in. We'll change this to 16th notes that's what I'm going to play on our drum part. And now we can record our drum performance as a loop in this section. Let's turn on the metronome. But let's right click it. This way we can see the settings for the metronome. I'm going to change the count in to be one bar and turn it on during recording, which will give us a measure of count in before we record. So like I said, we're going to record this in multiple passes. So I'm going to record the kick and then hear it back, then record the snare, hear that back, and then the hi-hat. And notice it quantizes on the way in. So on playback, it's going to be perfectly in time. So let's give it a shot.
Now, one of the useful things about recording with MIDI overdub is we can still add or change our part. So with the hi-hat, I just played eighth notes, but let's add some 16th notes in the spaces. And we could do that with MIDI overdub mode, which we turned on right over here. Let's go back into record and overdub those notes. So just like that, we recorded a MIDI performance. And we added different parts on different passes as you went through. So that's pretty much it for the basics of MIDI in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Oh!